Okay, we are recording. Hey, hello people. Welcome to the yet another video of, you know, this ARM A class series. Uh, we took a minor break, I think for a month-ish and we are back again. So yeah, this time we have kind of brought up, you know, the debug, it's a minor segue to debug architecture and how ARM implements that. And the reason why we are taking this up this early in the series is we want, you know, to enable ourselves as well as the people who are trying out, you know, the hands on practical stuff on Raspberry Pi with two things. Uh, one was, you know, the capability to add prints and get it on the terminal, which uh, we already have now. Uh, which was, I think, in one of the previous videos, we'll link to it in the description. And the second one was to actually see the nitty gritties of, you know, a processor, like, you know, the cache contents, what are all the registers, you know, uh, how it is controlled, what, whether something is enabled or not, and how to debug, you know, multi-core stuff. All of this, I feel like prints are not good enough to, uh, you know, debug that. We need something more nuanced. And this is where, you know, we bring uh, big guns, basically JTAG uh, and ARM has its own sort of, you know, debugging capabilities in hardware, which we will access via JTAG. And so what we are going to do today is basically cover, you know, uh, the, some theory, theory behind what JTAG is, how it developed uh, throughout, you know, the ages and where we are standing right now. And in the next video, we are going to, you know, deep dive on the actual setup of JTAG, how we have done it on Raspberry Pi and how we can, you know, it's beautiful how we can see all of the core info via GDB and JTAG. So that is going to be like coming in the next video. But today we can, you know, maybe start off with the theory behind, you know, the debugging and what sort of tools are involved. <coughs> there so yeah uh, let's start uh, so i would want to go you know to the very very ancient times of 1970s where we had just begun the era of digital you know computing and what is the basic element of a digital computing block it's a gate right so let's say we want to debug a gate a gate uh, basically so it's an end gate and how do you go about debugging that? So yeah, you have two inputs, one output. And if you want to see whether a gate behaves correctly or not, you just sort of probe it with the different inputs and see whether it matches the truth table or not. If it does, then yeah, it's good to go. If not, then probably, you know, there's something wrong with it and you need to change it. Now, in, in the earliest times, what used to happen was we used to, you know, create digital circuits out of these minor blocks, we used to connect physically with, you know, uh, connections, and we had access to each and every of the connection in that particular PCB. So we've, uh, we as a programmer or developer were free to basically probe any of that connection and see for ourselves whether it is behaving correctly or not. Now, that was that approach used to work very well. It was kind of you know unwritten, hand wavy, but it used to work very well for these type of ICs, where you know each and every gate was its own simple component connected physically via wires. But now, when the technology you know sort of progressed, what happened was all of this started to miniaturize uh, every combinational logic which was its own ic back back earlier now was packaged in a single ic which we call you know soc or asic right now yeah so as piyush is drawing we have like set of different combinational logics all of them grouped into one chip now this makes it a bit harder to go and see what is happening in combinational logic one in combination logic too, right? Because all of them sort of are intertwined with each other and the 
inputs the input pins are sort of coming from all over the place so yeah. then uh, pump, yeah. can, I, can i jump in? Yeah, yeah, yeah so i suppose the key point is that earlier we used to have access to these lines right. and now that is lost because lost. we only have access to exactly these lines right mm. which which are which only give visibility uh to a certain part mm. of logic mm. right and for example if i were to do this then we don't have visibility. Right. And, and in your diagram if you see the combinational logic 2 is completely untouched like there is no way to access that block through the external pins right right because these these yeah uh, inputs so to speak mm. inputs outputs whatever mm. uh, are completely inaccessible mm. uh, from the external external pins. okay then the question is how do you go about how do you yeah. debugging let's say this logic how do right. you probe this logic right. Right. exactly so as you would see you know many times industry sort of came together they realized there is a need to address this and they formed a group which is called joint tech test action group now oh, okay the name is quite funny and unconventional like joint test action you need to take some action i think <laughs> And that's how JTAG was formed. And what they did was establish a standard with which you can add some logic while making the chip, right? Which helps in debugging, which helps in solving whatever the problems we described uh, just now. And the reason for standard is because, you know, it. Uh, the SOC or the ASIC can be manufactured by any vendor. And if all of them are adhering to that, then you could have an external circuit, which acts, which sort of accesses the debug logic, which you have just put in and can help you debug. Uh, so yeah, this is what uh, was the motive behind JTAG, right? And yeah, as Piyush is drawing, yeah, this is like the gist of it. So the main logic, which is the functional logic of the chip sits here. And you add some more stuff, which we call debug logic, which is coming from the JTAG standard, right? And overall, you package it in a chip. And this debug logic will help you achieve all of the shortfalls of the debugging method, which we just described. Right? Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, maybe Piyush will go to the boundary scan stuff. Okay, sure. Do you yeah. want me to scroll down to yeah. the page with this the diagram? Okay, let me maybe zoom out. Right. Okay. Okay. So here, yeah, as you can see. Uh, I well, may, maybe before before mm -hmm. that, actually, you know, before we jump into uh, wait, before we jump into all of that, maybe let's talk about uh, JTAG a little more. Okay. So, JTAG essentially is, you know, I mean, for for a programmer's perspective or for like an user's perspective, an embedded software engineer's perspective, these are simply some pins on mm -hmm. you know your embedded solution uh, and there are how many maybe six of them hmm. uh, minimal is there a minimal count maybe i four think or three five. Uh, five five is minimum yeah. hmm. uh, we well, don't okay maybe five is minimum hmm. so five we'll check minimum. yeah yeah we'll, we'll check but hmm. some maybe you know in the next video as we show the setup uh, we'll get to know so six is like the max uh, uh you know then these are like the, okay just a moment Uh, sorry, that was my father. Okay, so there are like few pins hmm. provided, and then these pins are the ones that give you like an insight into all of the circuit. Right. Right. And then the general thing is that your big circuit will be, you know, it will have like smaller circuits. Hmm. Uh, there will be different companies or different teams, whatnot, hmm. and each one of them will have some debug logic. Hmm. Right and like we'll see on the next page also so there's something called the concept of daisy 
D A I S Y Daisy yeah. Channing. Whatever Daisy Channing. So what happens is you can connect. Uh, okay, so there would be like six of these wires going into the first chip, mm. first logic, so to speak, debug logic, and the main logic. So debug logic controls the main logic. And then from this debug logic, you will have six pins going into the next uh, you know, logic or next um, IP, so to speak, intellectual property. And it will have a debug logic as well. And then from here, you know, it will go to next one, next one, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. So now the thing is, there is some magic that you can do here such that you can communicate with this logic. So that's that's the idea of daisy chaining that you you know chain all the uh, digital logic units so mm. to speak individual units. So this can, for example, be an adder. Uh, this can maybe I don't know pipeline something. Mm. This can be multiplier. Uh, ALU so or any, whatever. Any, yeah, ALU whatever. And you know the granularity of this is completely up to the designer. <laughs> you can go debug the last uh, AND gate. But then that's not recommended yeah. <laughs> because then your debug logic becomes much more. It's a overkill. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But of course, you can go ahead and do that if you are hmm. a designer. Not recommended. So people typically, you know, uh, draw like a, it's a trade off. How much logic would you want to debug with a debug unit? So hmm. you, it's a trade off. Right. Anyway, so that being said, uh, let's just talk briefly about the JTAG pins. Hmm. or JTAG signals and that is what we have on this yeah. slide. So right. yeah, so basically whatever Piyush described this uh, port of six pins is called uh, tap port or rather tap, test access port. Yeah. And I think it has like six signals and few of them are kind of optional. So if it's your choice whether you want to implement it or not, but the mandatory ones are, you know, the tap clock, the data in, data out, and TMS. And there is uh, something called TRST, T reset, which is optional. And hence, you know, it's up to uh, implementation whether they want to implement it or not. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, if, this is kind of analogous to, you know, what uh, we used to you earlier. So, device one, device two, device three are kind of combinational logic, which can, and the beauty of it is, it can reside in the same main hmm. chip. Or it could be different chips altogether. So yeah. it works either way. So in this case, then you know this can be like CPU one, CPU this one, can CPU. be CPU two. Yeah. You know the granularity is hmm. just you know right. wherever you have these lines, you can daisy chain them. Hmm. And what here you can do is you can feed the data in via the TDI, right? And basically you can program all of those pins which were configured as input, hmm. right? Uh, which, you know, if you see earlier, all of the IPs get, you know, have some pins which are either input or output. Hmm. And those sort of trickle down throughout the circuit. And yeah, you can basically, you know, shift it, program the inputs of each and every device, hmm. and then read out the output through the uh, TDO. All right. So maybe let, let me just go ahead, go ahead. So I want to ask one question, like if I want to directly input some signal to device two, like CPU, mm -hmm. so how to okay. perform that? Right. So, so let's just hold on to that question for a minute. I just wanted to kind of paint some more you know, details on the picture that we already have. So remember that until now, we just were talking about the pins. We haven't talked about how, we, how that debug infrastructure might actually look like. Right. So let's let's spend some time on that and then we'll come to mm -hmm. answering your question. Right. Okay. First off, then we have like what one, two, three, four signals. Mm -hmm. Right. And daisy chaining is something like this that you take the TDO and connect it to the TDI of the other entity logic circuit. Uh, right. The TCK is the clock. And TMS, I think, is the mode select. Yeah. Right. And JTAG, like the details of it, we can go into that like later, but you can either set it to program mode or set it to, I think, data mode, right? So this is like, which mode are we talking about? So, you know, this line controls that. So in about program it. mode, I think you will basically send instructions 
hmm. to the day burger right. like hey you know uh, halt it at this point you know right. i want to see this view is okay okay so let's let's just talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. and okay so let's the picture that helps me is this so you have your logic here so which has like a lot of pins let's say a lot of incoming and outgoing wires and what you want to do is selectively debug this so one of the ways to debug is set this uh, you know let's say this side is the uh, well, let's say this side is the input side and this side is the output side for example hmm. right and we are wanting to specifically set the inputs on these lines and check what the output would be so as you were you know pointing to in 1970s if this was like a physical chip then i could right. take my multimeter or wires and wires know. and connect you know physically to you know <clears throat> zeros or ones right right i would connect like set the lines mm. to zeros ones whatever and see with my multimeter mm. or oscilloscope what the answers are one of the ways in which we can do this with this embedded logic embedded meaning within mm. like a chip there is like other logic here Right, and we specifically want to probe this, so we can have flip flops here. Yeah, right, and each line can have like a flip flop associated with it, so on and so forth. There are like many of those, and then we can have flip flops here. Now, if somehow we could load values into this flip flop, right, and then let's say set the clock on this, mm. meaning that you know it should evaluate the inputs. Mm then we would get some outputs and the outputs would also be stored uh, output would also be stored in the flip flops so now if we can set these flip flops and read this flip flops we would know that given this input this was the output yeah this logic is performing right. the way it is if the output is ex exactly what we expect it to be then hmm. the logic is good if not then the logic is bad right? something is wrong with this circuit so the entire JTAG story is around there being some flip-flops on the inputs and the outputs at a selected granularity. Again, you can have it down to an AND gate right, if you want, but then you are adding flip-flop around every AND gate, and that's expensive in terms of space and power. So why do this? So you will have some maybe you know adder, and to the adder, Whatever the inputs are, you have hmm. flip flops around that. And whatever the output is, you have flip flops around that. Now, there is an external circuit that will control, you know, or have access to these flip flops. Right. right. And the way these flip flops are arranged is they are connected to like the, the <coughs> uh, logic like to the input pins, but also they are connected to each other. So it's the data gets loaded serially, hmm. right? Uh, but after the activation, when you are in like the debug mode, the, the data is fed parallelly to this logic. Right? And the idea of daisy chaining now is that you have all of this input output, you know, flip flops, which are connected like so, and you have other logic here, which has its own you know, set of things and it goes like this that way the tdi feeds into the internal flip flops which are you know, logic so which are feeding into a logic and then you go around doing that for various logics and then comes out as comes tdo out. and this tdo you can connect to another, well, chip. another chip yeah. yeah and you know the story goes on mm. so now the idea is that you can feed continuously data through like bits through the TDI. Just one wire. Yeah. And you know, once you have set mm -hmm. all the flip flops, then you can, you know, essentially put it in the, uh, what do you say? Execute, execute state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once the execution is done, you can again shift all of these bits out mm -hmm. on the TDO and then look at that bit mm -hmm. pattern and info what happened. I should also mention that there is, you know, this debug logic here allows you to short circuit hmm. uh, you know bypass skip. yes bypass, bypass the flip flops so you can go from these flip flops directly to the other flip flops right here so all of that is available hmm. uh, and now coming back to you know 
uh, Vaseem's question. So could you repeat the question again, Vaseem, once? So I was just uh, asking, like, if there are multiple logic present in a wafer, like, so mm -hmm. if I want to skip some logic, which is uh, directly mm -hmm. connected to the debug mm -hmm. circuit, Right. Fair. Fair. So you have logic one here, you have logic two here, logic three here. Let's say you want to skip logic one or logic two, sorry. Right. Yeah. And you have the debug main debug port here. Then there is some debug logic here, debug logic here, debug logic here. So the idea is uh, that you have this TDI and TDO that goes via the debug logic. Right. So you have a TDI going in and then going around and then coming out like so. Right. And then there are flip flops here. Right? And your key logic is somewhere here. So the idea is if you connect this TDI to this TDO, you have bypassed all of this. Hmm. So that's how you know you can skip. And again, the, the the way in which you tell this debug logic that I want to skip this particular you know, probing of this particular logic has to do with the command. Right. Okay. And this seems like too, too much of a detailed and, you know, tedious work that you have to go set hmm. so many flip flops and so many bits. And yes, that is how it is. <laughs> there is automation, there are scripts and all of that. But each bit needs to be set. Hmm. And all of them are like serially set. Yeah. Right. And I think, uh, so one question we can ask ourselves is, you know, hey, we already have like, you know, the access to the out, the pins, right? The main pins. Why can't we use that for debug? Hmm. So the answer to that is, you know, in the earlier times when the packaging was, you know, breadboard friendly, you could really attach probes to a single pin, feed the data, read the data back. But with, you know, the current uh, ball and socket joints. It just fits into the chip snugly. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to attach pro probes to a single pin. Right? right. So in that way, it helps that you just have one pin, mm -hmm. uh, the JTEC pin. Uh, sorry, not one, but six pins basically. Yeah, minimum pins. Minimum pins, and you can and given this, you know, speed with which the current processors are running, it's fine that you know we feed the data serially. Right. Uh, we get the data back serially as well. Right. And by the way, uh, again, I have a question like uh, this JTAG uh, testing process, then it will be very, very slow. Yes. As we have to load a lot of data to the yes. processor. Yes. Or the logics. Yes. So the way that, that is absolutely true, you know, JTAG is slow uh, in terms of how much fast, let's say, a typical processor can run. So the, re uh, like, the trick to making debug faster is that you don't uh, or rather you skip a lot of logic you don't test right. everything at once you you know specifically target and check things individually so for example let's say you test the adder internal right and you feed in few uh, you know numbers and check if the answers are correct and you perform like a pretty decent test just on the adder now you know the adder works so next time on, you can skip the adder and be sure that, okay, adder works for sure. I just have to check other logic. So you check the pieces and hope that, you know, the sum of the pieces works. So that is like one of the tricks. And also this the JTAG based testing, I think happens uh, in the fabs a lot. Once you have manufactured like a wafer and the chip is cut out, you want to make sure whether the flip flops are well behaved, whether you know uh, the, the memory the, holds the data correctly. Yes, those kind of things. <clears throat> cool. Does that answer your question, Vasim? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I was going to mention that the 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 packaging that Mohammed was referring to is called the ball grid array, where you this is like you know the 3D chip. This is like the this is this is the bottom side. Oh, bottom. Yes, and then there are like mm. balls here, mm. and the balls are the ones that you know will connect on the PCB. On the PCB. Yeah. yeah, and this is how the chip is, and in un, underneath. And once it is fit, it's very hard to get the access. 
to those it writes to those pins yes so what you will do is you know just extract out six of mm. the pins typically the jtag and then probe the internals mm. using that yeah. okay cool i think we pretty much covered you know hmm. yeah. the idea behind anything JTAG. else which come which comes to your mind you can add mm, not in terms of visualization hmm. there is the jtag state machine hmm. and, you know i think it would be too deep to like yeah. cover yeah. in this video yeah. so uh, maybe what we can again re, you know revisit is why are we explaining all of this hmm. so it has to do with the fact that print printing stuff uh, would only give us you know so so much insight into what's what the processor is doing and what we want is we want to take the rpi and then there is like the broadcom the soc and then there mm. is like jtag here and then there are like you know 40 pins or so mm. on the board so this jtag is routed to few of the pins mm. and we would want to connect like the jtag controller yeah or external debugger so to speak and then using this we would want to command the cpu mm. to halt mm. at a particular instruction then see what's the memory content mm. and all of that essentially we'll be able to do or run the gdp here mm. that's why we want to you know introduce yeah. jtag and debugging okay go ahead uh, do you want to talk about uh, briefly maybe a uh, few of the details that you were hinting at, which is what our setup looks like or a anything that comes to your mind relating to this? Uh, I think uh, we can, I think this is a nice segue to sort of end the video for now. I see. And okay. in the next video, we can, you know, basically start from our setup. How does mm -hmm. it look like? What mm -hmm. all ICs we have used? Mm -hmm. And then give a demo of, you know, how the debugging would look like. Fair. And, and then maybe we can also talk about debugging in a little more detail. In yeah, terms yeah, of yeah internal external. and like how how does it look like you know in hmm. this day and age right yeah uh, so we have like you know self-hosted debug we have external debug which we are going to use right. but right. arm also has a capability to you know put the processing element or cores hmm. in our example in a self-hosted debug mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. where a code running inside that element can debug you know another code in another exception level or the same exception right, so right. It's, it's a self-hosted mode right so maybe then I'll just, uh, you know, quickly recap and yeah. then we can end the video for today there. Yeah. Right. So we talked about the fact that 1970s, we had like a nice PCB board where there were, you know, small logics that were connected with mm. each other. You know, and you could, what you could do is probe these wires, mm. right, and force values uh, on, you know, the chips mm. and check on, uh, you know, other wires what mm. the values are. Uh, slowly, what happened was, you know, miniaturization kicked in, thanks to VLSI and semiconductor mm. Moore's law, essentially. And all of these went from a PCB, let's say, to a single SOC. IC. Mm. Right? SOC, okay, SOC or an IC. Mm. SOC is, I think, you know, happened. Even, I mean, like, steroid version of Yes, IC. IC. <laughs> and then these were, like, internally connected. Mm. And then... Uh, you know, various folks in the industry, mm. like different companies, questioned themselves as to how to debug this, and they came up with JTAG, which is Joint Test Action Group, and they came up with a standard. Uh, for all practical purposes, in our case, we only think of it as, you know, six friendly wires. Uh, you know, wires that are exposed on the chip on the IC. Mm -hmm. And then there is, uh, well, okay, uh, so logic. So along with your logic, you have to also have some debug logic, mm. right, which can control what's going in and what's coming out. And what we mentioned was the way to control that is by adding in flip-flops on the input and the output, and then having some way to control uh, you know, what goes into those flip-flops. And then we also talked about the fact that different logics, you know, the TDI pin, so to speak, the test data in and the TDO. Yeah, if you were to connect the TDO of one chip to TDI of another, then that's called daisy chaining. Mm. And one of the things we touched upon is you can bypass a chip by connecting the TDI 
to TTO, right? And then we talked about the J tag uh, running in like either the programmer or programmable mode or the data mode, right? data or command mode, whatever. So that's uh, pretty much what we touched upon. And then the last thing is why we are talking about all of this is we want to look inside the Raspberry Pi, the mm -hmm. SOC, and JTAG is the way to do that. Yeah. And we thought, you know, a little bit of theory behind it would uh, really help. Yes, would orient. Yes, would yeah. orient. And with that, then we can control. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, nice. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for staying. Uh, yeah, folks, and hopefully, yeah. you know, people will enjoy what's coming yeah. there. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Bye -bye. have a good day. Bye bye.